Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mysteries Unlimited. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be back on the air tonight. We've had a lot of uh, sickness in our family. Uh, Leo's been sick. I've been a little bit under the weather as well. Uh, but it's good to be back on the air. Uh, before I bring uh, Leo in, I just want to uh, thank everybody for showing up tonight and watching the live broadcast. If uh, you feel the need or the urge or we just like to uh, there's a support button there and the uh, way gas prices are we could use a little extra support because me and leo uh we're the real deal type researchers we actually get out in the woods uh often very often uh and if you watch it if you're watching the show on a uh after it's live and you watch it on a playback there is a thanks button which is also a way of donating and supporting our efforts here uh, without any further ado, let me bring uh, my partner in crime, Leo, in. We'll check his mic out and all that cool stuff. That looks like Leo. Is that Leo? Last time I checked. All right. Let me let me let me bump your mic up just a little bit. All right. Uh, How is everything on your end of the world? Oh man, compared to the last time we we did a show. Getting back out in the woods did me wonders, man. It was awesome. It completely changed my focus of what's uh, of what I'm going to be doing this year. I mean, we have what we have planned and, and have to go through with that. But this this new new but not so new find has uh, yeah, it's, it's it it may redirect things a little bit. Well, that, that's that's the kind of stuff we uh, we like to hear. Uh, and for people who do not know. Leo and I have a combined research uh, effort of over 50 years, and we're not we're not the kind of guys who go out uh, two or three weekends a year uh, and uh, say we're some kind of big researcher. Uh, we go out very very often. Uh, in fact, I pulled five days just about a month ago, and then I've been out several times since then. And I know Leo goes out a lot as well. Uh, we're not these. Uh, guys that just uh, want to wear the shirt and not put in the work we actually put in the work so we got a right to wear the shirts uh some of these guys and i'm not against conferences and things like that uh, i like going to them occasionally too but if you're going to 10 conferences a year you don't you don't have a whole lot of time to research through the summer um, because in the winter most time you can't research because of the weather or you can't do it nowhere near as much and i'm not against conferences and i like going to them and uh meeting people and things like that but i think mo most people are uh, more of a uh, conference goers than they are researchers and if that's controversial so be it uh, i'm in kind of a uh, matter of fact mood to mood tonight uh, i'll probably say a whole lot of controversial stuff and that's unusual for me i like that move it only happens once in a while but you gotta blow off some steam now and again uh well uh, I, one thing that uh, i've seen people uh, somebody said it and i agreed with it uh, they said that 95% of everything you see in the Bigfoot world is either a hoax, uh, pareidolia, or, uh, you know, just misinterpretation. And I thought maybe that was a little bit high, 95%. 95%? Yeah. yeah, that's just a wee bit high. So my thing was, I thought it was from 90 to 95% was probably the <laughs> everything, you know, you see is, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's, it's, it's phony baloney. Uh, we've seen a whole lot of that the last week of phony baloney stuff oh are you and for instance the uh the possible uh prostitute dog man are you speaking of the zoo thing yes uh I, i've had that uh, several people sent that to me the, yeah uh, me too i get the same thing and you, it looks. I told them it looks like a costume off of that you can buy off of Amazon. And what people need to realize, these are just PR stunts by the zoo because I can guarantee you their Facebook page and their website has got more views in the last week than it has all year. And it's a zoo. Of, it's a zoo camera. They have the before, the after, the during. They know exactly what it is. And I mean, it's wearing pants. So. Right. I remember the old the old 1800s Bigfoot reports where they didn't find it decent to just give a, give a report. So they would say 
you know, because it wasn't considered decent back in that that day to say naked or nude. So they would say that it had covering over. It was only wearing a, a you know a raggedy piece of cloth. You wasn't wearing anything at all. You just can't. You don't want to say naked. Well, like, <laughs> but, like you say, the the zoo actually has video footage of this. Yeah, they know. They they know. And they've not released it, and when they've not released it for a reason. Yeah, it's because it shows them out there setting up the shot. Is <laughs> most likely it, uh, and it's just a PR stunt. I've seen it happen many times that they do this kind of thing. They uh, draw attention to the zoo. Uh, and I'm sure their donations and their follows and all that kind of stuff increases during that time. And it's a smart PR move. Uh, it's a it's a crappy uh, hoaxy type thing to do, which I would never do. But uh, you know, it's a good PR stunt if you don't care about Bigfoot, you don't care about truth. It's well, that's thing the do. thing. If if you're the average person and you don't have anything personally invested in cryptid, you're not going to be offended by that. It's people like us that it kind of ticks us off because we know what it is it's we know it's it's well, fake but the, i mean just, the general public isn't going to be offended by it they're not going to care we've got over 50 years of this i mean we spent a, a large part of our life doing this kind of research uh and i've got places on my legs and body where i fell and got hurt that's going to be with me until i die uh, i mean oh yeah it's healed up it's not bleeding anymore but there's still a scar there so oh, yeah. some of us, some of us take it kind of seriously. Well, I mean, and it, me too. I, I've, I have no business doing this at all anymore. My body's wrecked. <laughs> but I mean, how? But really, though, if you have an active area, how do you stop it? How do you just ignore it? And you can't. It'll, it'll drive you nuts, and you'll end up back in the woods anyway. Well, I've I tried. get, I get frustrated, worry. and I know you do too. I get frustrated with all the hoax and. Uh, all the negative stuff that goes along with Bigfoot, uh, you know, and I say, well, I'm going to back off for a while, back off for a while. And then that urge hits and you just can't do it. You got to go do it. I don't care if it's for just one hour. You got to go check a certain area just to see if there's a track or, and my, my, my thing is to go check my gifting area. So I, I can get to my gifting area and hike to hit and check it all out and back probably within two, two and a half hours if I hurry. Uh, so, you know, I, I go, I go do it. And then once I get in there, of course, I stay longer. Well, that's what happens. And then when you come out, you feel so much better <laughs> than when you went in and, and you kind of come down off that, but, oh yeah, I get to the boiling point all the time. But that's once you get out there, like last week and this week, just supercharged me. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I've been feeling very, uh, real poor, uh, losing sleep, uh, allergies. Uh, I think I might've been dehydrated to be honest with you. Uh, but I got out in the woods uh, the other day, and it, it made me feel a lot better. I, uh, not just about life in general, but physically it makes me feel. Uh, and I wrote an article prior to that uh, on our website about the healing nature of the mountains and the forest, their healing power of, the, of nature. And a lot of people have not read it, of course, and I think uh, they should, because not because I wrote it, because there's information in there from uh, good sources that where they've done studies on uh, kids with ADHD that they gave them so much time out in the uh, on a trail in the forest and how it really helped them and things like that. It's kind of interesting, uh, and I think it. I think I don't know what helps me. We've been saying it for years. I know I battle with depression at times, and if I can go into the woods, usually it helps me. Uh, you know, fight that off for a little while. I'm the exact same way, and. It, it, it's weird because the physical pain the next day from the soreness the next day from that is completely different than the soreness and the mood you're in from doing anything else. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're, you're sore, but you don't care. It's, you, you, you know, it's not, it, it's, you're sore, but you earned it. And, and yeah, everything you're, the, my breathing is better. Uh, my mood for days just shoots right up. So, yeah. Well, and you know, when we done the uh, when we done the five day expedition uh, with my friend Guy from Arkansas, I hadn't been out much because it's pretty early in the year for me, and I was doing a lot of stuff around home. The first two days, man, it, it took a toll on me. But by the third day, I'd caught my wind, man. I was just ready to go. You know, let's stay out the dark, you know, type thing. But uh, of course, we can't. You know, we got. He's a little bit older than I am, but he's in better shape than I am. He's uh, 
I'm still overweight, even though I've lost probably close to 50 pounds. Uh, I'm still overweight. But, man, I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think we got a real good show tonight. There's a lot of things we want to get to. Uh, I got some bonus content if we get to it. If we don't, it's okay because <laughs> it's one of them controversial type things. And I might make somebody mad or hurt their feelings. You know, not like they care about my feelings or anything. Well, (laughs) that's what I I was just going to say. You're (laughs) one of the nicest people I know. People don't mind taking a shot at you or people love taking shots at me. If That's okay because I'll shoot back. (laughs) And sometimes I deserve it because I have a big mouth and I don't care if I I don't want to purposely hurt anybody. But if someone fires at me, I'm going to fire back. I'm not, you know, I I don't work. Well, I'm pretty easy to get along with and I usually don't. uh, which I still ain't going to call nobody out real bad. But uh, if we get to the bonus material, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's kind of funny and it's kind of sad at the same time. And But I'll get into that later maybe. Uh, but tonight we're going to talk about uh, – let me thank everybody too. Uh, and I know Lee, I feel like Leo feels the same way. We want to thank everybody for uh, all their prayers and well wishes while we've been off and we've had – uh, health problems ourselves and we have uh, our families have been sick uh, my uncle's in real bad shape still yet uh, my dad's doing much better my mom's checks came out all right uh, my cousin he's still pretty sick but he's kind of stubborn you know like men are and he won't go to the doctor so you know what can you do if you, if you won't go get help there's not a whole lot we can do for you and so we thank everybody for all the uh, support on that end of it and and for being patient with us as we uh finally get around to doing a show absolutely we do and then and the thing is you don't realize there's people that you don't necessarily interact with every day but the minute they know that something's wrong they're right there with prayers and i I like to think that a lot of them don't just type the word out they actually say a quick prayer because it it all helps and something people may not uh, i know some people realize it and, and and it's not always just men but Normally, in the early springtime, men have a extra workload because uh, we have a lot of grass mowing and and getting the gardens ready and things like that. So we have a lot of extra work on us when the spring comes, so we get caught up. Uh, so that that also played a factor in, in for me as well. And I'm actually late getting my little garden out this year, but my tilter had tore up, and I tried to get it fixed, and the the guy got in trouble for having uh, uh, abuse to a dog. And he ended up fleeing the the state, and, and it was bad. He had locked the dog. He had moved out of the house and locked the dog in there, and it was it was just it defecated everywhere, and it was starved to death and mange and and all kinds of cruelty to animals. And, and they was looking for him, so he left, and he took quite a few people's stuff with it, from what I understand. But I was able to get my tilter back, but nobody could like, nobody fix it. So I ended up having to buy a new cheapo tilter. And he'll work you to death, <laughs> but it worked. I mean, I got the garden, garden out. <laughs> well, better late than never. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's, uh, that's the thing about this time of year. If you get your garden out late, that's okay. It's you still yeah, yeah. It'll you got you got plenty of time. I watch some of my cabbages died, and I know people didn't tune in to hear about my garden. But anyways, tonight we're gonna tonight <laughs> we're gonna talk about some real cool stuff. We're gonna show you some real cool pictures. We're going to do some pictures from Leo uh, that nobody has seen that I know of other than just maybe a select few. Uh, then we're going to cover some historical cases. And then I'm going to tell you tell you a little bit about this big baby. See? So I got props. <laughs> <laughs> I got props. So I, so we're going to, we're going to got some good stuff to cover. And if we run a little bit long, that's okay. And if we don't, that's okay, too. Uh, so Leo, do we want to set this up on how you captured this, this, uh, photograph? I got to answer a quick question from the chat first. Uh, sure. no, it was, it was right. It was, uh, actually pretty local in here in Nova Scotia, Evan. It wasn't, uh, no, man, I gas prices to go to New Brunswick. Not likely, not anytime soon. So it was here in Nova Scotia. Anyway. Speaking of gas prices, what is your average price right now? Oh, I don't. I don't even. It went up uh, last last Friday, I think. I don't even know. It, it's for a for a liter. It's 
or a 210, something like that. So, yeah, yours is higher than ours. And ours is about, uh, roughly ours is about $5 a gallon in this area. So we're anywhere from about 460 up to about 480 And uh, I've been trying to put off buying gas because I don't want to... Uh, I'm afraid it might, you know, you go fill up and then the next day it drops 20 cents, <laughs> you know, or something. But Well, ours, just, ours don't do any dropping by 20 cents. If it did, I would. Well, now, we've been having daily increases. I mean, I know some places going up 10, 20, some, some places even went up like 40 cents overnight. Uh, it's the gas they already had in the tank, but they have to compensate for the next gas coming, I guess. So, so Ma is in the chat and she says right now it's 216 a liter, so. Yeah, we're you know, about two and a half liters to a gallon, I think. So, yeah. uh, so Leo, we're going to show one of your pictures, and I think that you captured this picture in kind of a unique way, correct? Well, I, would, I don't know if it's unique. I think people have been doing it for years, but I, I've always made a habit of it, and I've actually gotten some really good results, and I've gotten some mind-boggling <laughs> results. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't send that picture, but you have seen it. It's the one that's. It's just a black picture of hair. But anyway, how it was, how I got these ones and and that one is when I go to leave an area. If I'm checking something out, like on, um, when I go to leave an area, if you have a video camera or you have a cell phone, whether you want a video or just take shots. Uh, these were shots. So what what I do is I'll turn around and then start to walk away, put the camera up by my shoulder, and take just take shots over my shoulder. And it has worked in the past as far as you know. Once you turn their, your back to them, the, there's always the potential that you know they could pop out and have a little look, or in this case, a lot more than that. But, well, I, uh, had a, I used to have a GoPro, and I would rig it up where it would shoot backwards sometimes. Not yeah, always, so it's, every it's, once in a while. It's not new. I think a lot of researchers have been doing that, been doing it for years. They just, I don't know how many still bother with it, but yeah, I've had I've had great luck with it. Especially if you think there's something in the area, or it's in just a good area, anyways. Yeah, well, I mean, in an active area, why not? <laughs> yeah. You're right. Okay, let's. Uh, now, this is no, I'll, before we actually show the picture. I'll just let everybody know this is not the greatest picture in the world. I mean, you have a lot better photos than this. No, no, these are definitely potentials that that Tom and I have looked in. We're not making any claims. These are not top-notch pictures. Uh, these are over-the-shoulder shots taken over my shoulder and found later. So, but for them to be mistaken as shadow and stuff like that. I, I generally rule that stuff out and throw it away and I don't bother with it at all. When I see something that needs a second look, that's when Tom and I kind of put our heads together and say, all right, this is something that is actually worth looking at. And I've got, uh, I've done several enhancements on this to try to bring, uh, I'll say it, the figures out. Because <laughs> uh, we've we think there's more than one figure here, so uh, I'll go ahead and put this on the stream, hopefully. Uh, probably a little rusty since I've not uh, dealt with this deal. Now, I know this is a little hard to see, but we're going to get to it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Does this help any? And it, this, to me, it appears to be, and this was my first reaction before me and Leo really talked about it really a whole lot. To me, it appears to be something sitting down uh, on its butt. Is that kind of what you see, Leo? Well, what I what I've seen, I mean, in this it does look bad on here, but um, it gets better, brother. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, the, the the thing that caught my attention, and I thought, well, you know, there's no no way a shadow did that there was uh, the rocks are there are not uh it's not uh, there's no there's no amount of rock right there i mean the place is very very rocky and you have jagged sharp rock sticking out of out of the bank but in a, in a lot of places but this isn't one of them so nothing it made it didn't make any sense that there was any anything dark there at all but there's something sitting down and then it appears to be 
something smaller sitting on that. And there is a perfect, perfectly round sphere that this smaller one looks like it's holding on. So when I saw the ball, I started, I, I cracked up and I thought, there's no way that this is just shadow and this, there, there's no way it's anything else. So it, we, had, we had to look at it. And for those who maybe cannot see any of this detail yet or some of the details, it's, I got some enhancements that's going to make it somewhat clearer for you uh, and show the potential of what may be in this photograph. Uh, Leo, now in this area, this is where you've had uh, sightings and uh, found evidence in the past, correct? Uh, in this area, uh, rock throwing encounter when I was eight years old. Um, first, uh, just upstream, first visual, uh, 2019, uh, the pictures that we had on the, the few episodes back on, on the show there with the one that we call live and that was behind the tree and then stuck his head out to watch me in the water. And this uh, is got a, it's got a big deep ravine, correct? Yeah. It kind of, it kind of flows along at times, but I mean, there's there's places there where you're looking at a good 150 foot climb if you want to climb to the top. And the picture you're referring to was on a couple episodes back, and it's phenomenal. If uh, if you've not seen it, you probably need to go back and watch that episode if you've not seen it, because it is a, it's an incredible photograph. Uh, uh, amazing detail. Uh, so, you know, and, but of course, according to all the couch potato researchers, it's a, a dude in a suit. <laughs> well, no, actually that's not, well, with that one, they didn't say that with that oh, one, it was all, it was all about the Photoshop. So, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That was the we, Photoshop deal. Yeah. We killed that one. <laughs> okay. Let's see. If, let's, let's, let's go back to the photograph. I'll zoom in out. Let's go to the next one. This is, uh, this is where I have enhanced it and zoomed it in a little bit. You still can't, if you kind of look, uh, if you can see this with the mouse, you can kind of see the arm of what we think is a smaller one. And this would be a ball, I guess, or who knows? It could be just a big rock it's holding. I don't know. I thought about a rock too, but then for an arm that size, mm -hmm. that, that's it'd be awfully heavy. And uh, this here would be I, I, maybe a, a father or mother. You, you know, if if I knew for sure that it was one, I would ha I would automatically guess female. That's what I would think because of the younger. Yeah, one. with with the little one and the and but the ball man that that I mean that's a that's perfectly round. That's not that's not. Uh, you know, our, our imagination wanting it to be something. I never thought in a million years that I'd <laughs> catch well, one hold of ball. Where but. do you think they might find the ball at? Do you have any idea? Anything close? One could have uh, washed in from somewhere else or anything or what? It it could have washed down the brook. They could have gone up. Uh, there's cattle on the other side of the road. So if they had climbed the bank and got up by the road, uh, not so much the side of the road that where this area is on, but the other side, um, there, uh, there's any number of homes that I can think of on that mountain that, I mean, kids just leave their toys out, sure. you know, outside all year long. And so wind that blew it or anything. Oh yeah. Wind could have blown it from, from their yard across and, and, you know, wound up in the brook, but you know, it just, I don't know, just, uh, Having a, a ball, it kind of cracked me up. And just hang with us now. We got some more uh, uh, enhancements of this. That uh, there's the long distance shot of it, which is still you can. It still don't look like a natural structure to me. It's, it's not a tree stump. Uh, it's not a boulder with a shadow or anything like that. Not to me. It's not, anyways. And the thing is, I mean, I, I have other pictures of the area. I mean, you can't, I can't duplicate the sun that day. I can't, you know, I can't duplicate the conditions. But there's absolutely, there's a tree that comes, kind of comes out from the bank like that. There's dirt. And then there's the, you know, the, the surface of the, of the brook. There, there's nothing there. 
at any other time that could form that. It, well, to me, looking at it, it almost looks as if the arms are propped up on the knees. Like, well, just like we would say it, I guess, in a way, if you got your knees up, you can't put your arms on them. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like, like up on, uh, kind of on your throat, uh, on your thigh, but toward your knee, yeah. Right, and that's kind of what it looks like to me. But uh, there's actually a little bit, we got some other photographs of this that I think are actually may lean you toward the other way a little bit. I mean, if you kind of look, you can kind of see a hand in that. Uh, on what we think may be a ball or a, who knows, a rock, a pipe hand or something. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is, is definitely something round. I, I say ball, but I, in fact is, I don't, I don't know. It could be a, a round lid off something. I, round lid. Yeah, you but know, it, I, I didn't think about that. Could You said there was cows close by. Could it possibly be a uh, lid off of a five-gallon bucket or something like that? Maybe. Could, man up there, it could be anything like that. Little tiny farms, little, not necessarily farms, but they have a couple of cattle, some horses, stuff like that. So... So, uh, yeah, it could be anything like that. The only thing that, that we know is it's round, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next. That's kind of a weird look. But see, that still looks like an arm to me. Yeah, and, and you can kind of... And look, it kind of looks kind of like a face. I mean, eyeball, eyeball, nose, mouth. I mean, it just kind of looks like it to me. I mean, of course, pareidolia or matrix, matrixine, it's hard to say, yeah, it kicks in for you. But it's hard to say. But it's interesting, and you know, like you say, you caught it over the shoulder, so. Yeah, we, it's not something we can say for sure, but as far as anything else being ruled out, everything else has been ruled out, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't give us a definite. And this is kind of a color blast on it, and you you can even actually it kind of brings out more details in the face, or what we think is a face. Hmm. Just, I don't know. It's interesting, anyway. It's a, definitely a possibility. But the fact that, well, I'll say she. The fact that she, if if we're right in the way that we're leaning and only leaning but if she's sitting there with a young one with some kind of round whatever that close and we had no idea just think of how close they can be standing to you and just standing still and not have any idea i mean she's sitting there looking very comfortable with the kid and a toy just sitting there were monitoring us and we had no idea. Well, uh, that brings something to mind that happened just a few days ago. Well, two days ago, uh, we've got a big bear that comes down here and gets into the garbage and things like that. Well, the dogs barked. So my dad went up there with a flashlight, uh, to see, you know, try to run the bear off. And, he seen us kind of go across the, the highway and over to the uh, this little bank, and that bear kind of balled up at the bottom of that tree and laid its head right up the tree trunk to hide. And it didn't he shine a light and everything right on it? And he said, "No, nah, I know that's not a black spot on that tree because you know, of course, we he sees that tree pretty often." And and where we uh, used to do a lot of coon hunting and stuff, and coons will hide, you know, raccoons will hide like that. But that bear knew how to hide. Yep. Uh, and, and in my opinion, I think Sasquatch is way more intelligent than a bear. <laughs> so they know how to be still and how to blend Oops. in and be quiet and all that kind of stuff. No, Muriel, I, I, I don't think... I, d I don't think it's a dog man. That that uh, I'm gonna have to see a dog man before I'm gonna even entertain that thought. But 
no, this this area has been uh, uh, right from my first encounter. This this area has been somewhere that I've studied, and I know like the back of my hand. I spent my whole childhood there. There's never any any talk of any type of dogman type of thing, and but very active with Sasquatch. So I'm I'm pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about tossing out the dogman one on this one. And no chance it could be a person. I don't believe. <laughs> no, there. That's <laughs> no. I, anybody was down there, they would have said hi. <laughs> oh yeah. But, but the thing is, that where there where there used to be paths and trails when I was a kid, there's it's all grown in. There's nothing. Nobody's going down there anymore. Well, Which I mean is, is good for them, but it's not. It kind of makes me sad because we spent so much time there as kids, right? And now the kids on the on that mountain. Are looking down, playing with little gadgets, and they're missing on missing out on a really, really beautiful place. And you, well, you I know. call them cell phone zombies, is what I call yeah. them. Uh, and I guess we're all guilty of it a little bit. Uh, uh, but like around here, we have quite a few uh, trails and uh, uh, places to hike and visit. And but you don't. Most of the time, it's out of state people or something like that. It's coming in and uh, hiking the trails. It's not very many locals. Uh, one place, uh, and if Jimmy Blanton's still in the uh, in the chat, he knows it very well. Is a place called Blanton Forest. Uh, there's like it's a hundred year. It hasn't been cut in a hundred years. The forest ha has not. But uh, they dated the oldest tree there to like 330 some odd year old. Uh, beautiful place. Uh, there's a place on it called Knobby Rock. Uh, which is a, it's a hard hike. Uh, Jimmy's been to it uh, straight up most of the way. And then there's a place called the maze. If you want to go another couple miles deep where all these cliffs have fell in and it makes a big rock maze that you snake in and out and a beautiful area. But uh, most people in this area don't go there, uh, but it's awesome to get back there. Once you get back there, it's unreal how it, it opens up. And it's called Blanton Forest. And without a doubt, there's Sasquatch in that general area because there's nothing back there besides trees and water and animals. Yeah, the three things they need. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is this photograph here. Uh, this is that I just uh, turned it black and white, desaturated it. And it's still, you can still see what appears to be an arm, a leg. Uh, possible small one up front and a head. Well, that's the thing is that if you follow from from the hand up the arm, mm -hmm. you can see you can see the uh, like the hand that's on the on the round thing from the from the little one there. Yeah. If you follow that up, you can see the the shoulder and possibly the head of a yeah, kind of, of a the side. Other. It's an interesting photograph. I mean, of course, we can't say one hundred percent, but uh, it's still. I've seen a lot worse on, on Facebook. Oh know? well, that's the thing. What I what I well, what I generally throw out because I mean, if you stare at a picture long enough, and if you blow it up rather than uh, resize, you end up with a lot of blur, and you'll see a thousand of them. But yeah. and, but there's, you know, like I said, I. I'm I'm ninety nine percent on this one simply because in forty five years I've never seen anything right at that spot uh, shadow shadow wise or rock wise or anything that would even come close to being to form in something that accurate. It just so I'm myself I'm ninety nine percent on it, but I'm not a hundred because I didn't physically see it with my eyes. And we do know this is not a, uh, a bush that you've zoomed in nine million times <laughs> and, uh, you know, play with the, con the contrast and all that stuff. And, you know, that we see a lot of that on Facebook uh, and the groups and all that kind of stuff. And, and if you don't see uh, 10 Bigfoot and they're all holding a baby and one of them's juggling, one of them's eating ice cream, they get mad at you. Uh, you know, if you say don't, if you don't agree with them, so. What can you do now? This this photograph here. This is a zoom in on what we think would be the ball, um, uh, and what would be the hand of the baby. And you can kind of see digits. You can see almost see digits. 
I mean, that's to me, I, uh, maybe I'm just, uh, I don't know, wishful thinking, but I, I can kind of see a hand there. It looks like a shape of a hand. Uh, and again, so look how perfectly round, whatever that thing is, look how perfectly round that is. That's It's the moon. It's a big ball of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat the cheese, Sasquatch. It'll stop you up. <laughs> <Get it. laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got all this pent up in energy, buddy, from two months of no shows. But yeah, to me, it looks like a hand. I mean, I don't, don't look like a natural tree branch or anything like that. It's just, it's not a face. It's not a, you know, a little bit of a side view. It's not a, it's not a shadow that could just be done by blowing a picture up to the blurring point. It's not, there's just way too much coincidental detail there for me to throw it, throw it out. And believe me, I throw a lot of stuff out. Yeah, well, I do too. I got a whole lot of stuff that <clears throat> I've never shared or whatever. Uh, tons and tons of GoPro footage. When I first actually started doing some research online, uh, some of the big name uh, researchers, I guess you call them, uh, they were more popular than me, probably still are. Uh, they accused me of not actually going out in the woods. Uh, even though I had, uh, I, I didn't show it, but I had hours and hours of GoPro footage of me walking in the middle of nowhere, you know, but I didn't, you know, what can you say, you know, what can you do about it? You can't do anything about it. No, uh, okay. Now what I'm going to, the next uh, set of pictures is actually showing the ravine in the area, general area of where this is at. So if you need to Leo, you can kind of talk about the area. So this is at, it was at another date, because I, I think the water was, uh, this, this looks a lot drier, so this will probably would have been later on in the year, which are in the hot, the hottest weather. But, but man, look how steep it is, though. It is, when you, to, to get up those, those, the sides of those banks in that area is hard to do. I remember being when I was a kid coming down them, and what we used to do was we'd go to one tree, brace ourselves on that, look at another tree, aim at that tree, try to scoot over to that tree, and all, all the time slowly going down. Because if you and if you slipped and landed down there on that rock, you know you were going to get hurt. But you're, we were mountain boys, so we knew how to nav navigate a mountain. Looks like there's a little water in it, Leo. Yeah, yeah, it's it's running, but it's very low. Does it does it really run big at times? No, it, it never gets real real big, but there's places there in that area that are above waist deep. That's that's pretty that's pretty decent. Uh, let's see here. I think I've got a couple more shots from that general area. That's a little maybe a little Yeah, this is a, this is a little uh, a little further up the mountain up here uh, as you go up everything is is moss covered so if you if you were to just take a leisurely walk and come upon that on a on a really sunny day it the place looks it's so green that it just it looks like the, the whole place is glowing there's the, it looks like the air itself is green it's it's and, amazing up there. And this is where the picture of the Bigfoot the you call Ivan. Yep. Roughly this same general area, right? This is and, and when you maybe, took the picture of Ivan, you were down in the ravine shooting upwards. Yeah, I was I was right, I was down in the water itself a, a lot further downstream. Uh this would be maybe a quarter to a half mile upstream from where I got the, that those pictures. Okay, I think I have one more of the actual area. Yeah, that's uh, must be looking up the mountain from the ravine area. Let me see, ninety-two yeah. Sasquatch. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's if you were to if you were to just keep zooming that. Well, if we sat here and stared at it, you, you'd see ten thousand faces. But yeah, I mean, yeah. See, right there's a face. Look at this. See, there's a face. Oh, there you go. And it's all it is is a leaf. And shadow and light, and that's not a Bigfoot. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, the, the this area reminds me a lot of my area. 
uh, with the steep mountains and the little streams and the rocks and stuff like that. It's really, really, really cool. Well, as far as, uh, I mean, you you guys have different different animals than we do. We don't have any rattlesnakes or anything like that. We oh, none of none of our snakes are poisonous or anything like that. But really, I mean, when it rains in Kentucky or Ohio, I know that within two days it's going to rain here. So we're not as far as how our our woods are you you guys have with all the spanish moss and stuff like that you guys have some beautiful woods and some really creepy looking woods i mean they it's perfect for for horror movies but <laughs> overall there is a lot of times when you when you post something and the similarities to to this area in nova scotia are it's it's, it's uncanny uh, you talk about snakes uh actually my neighbor killed a rattlesnake just a few days ago uh real close here to wasn't close to his house and just across the road from my house and about every year we kill rattlesnakes and copperheads that crawl right down into the yard or right into the driveways every year so it's just something we have to live with and deal with and uh i worry of the mornings because uh it's dark and you go out to get in your car uh you know you can't really see well and then if, if the car had been driven later they get you know it's a cool night they'll get around them tires and stuff and get some of that heat and so you have to be careful and be aware and then not counting if you get in the mountains i've run on snakes numerous times in the mountains so well when i was there in in 2013 or 2014 uh i wasn't even thinking about rattlesnakes i was I'm, <laughs> I'm used to going in the woods and doing it the way that i did here and my my ex wife was like, well, don't don't for don't you got to remember the snakes. I'm getting out of the car and walking barefoot until <laughs> I you know get sit I sit down on the uh, in the grass or on the, you know on the side of the of a stream or whatever. Put my hiking boots on and stuff like that. I I wasn't thinking about that at all because I'm just not used to it. But yeah, her family had a a, <laughs> a bit of a bizarre tradition. Uh, they, uh, on Sundays after church, she told me that they would go out snake killing. And I, okay, I know what killing a snake means, but w what what in particular is snake killing? Like what kind of activity is that? <laughs> they, used, they used to all pile on the back of their truck, drive around looking for snakes on the back roads, and run them over. This is how they would spend huh. their Sunday afternoons. Well, used to we done crow shooting. I mean, I, I've not done it, but oh, yeah. that, was a, that was a big thing. Go out and shoot crows. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But we just sometimes us country folk are kind of weird. I know uh, the mentality is, you know, look at that big beautiful bird. Let's kill it so we can look at it. You know, that's <laughs> and you people would shoot them and they fall to the ground. They just look at it. And say, Man, that thing's pretty, ain't it? Then they throw it down and walk away. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, it's the same thing on the on the mountain here. It's it, it, <laughs> it's people will will make an effort to just go out and blow a bird out of a tree because it's there. But but uh, it's not not so much anymore. But back when I was a kid, that was kind of the way it was. But well, uh, uh, since we're talking about birds, I can give you an interesting uh, interesting thing about the United States. We used to have a big colorful parrot that was capable of talking here in the United States for a long, long time. But due to, it was, it really wasn't that afraid of people. And uh, so when the hard times hit, the guys would go out and kill them. They would just wipe them out. And that's actually what happened. That's why they're extinct. They, they, they killed them and ate them because uh, of hard times. And they wiped it out. And it was a big old a parrot that was capable of, talking and everything and now it's extinct because people were hungry <laughs> man's gotta eat yeah i would like to have some of them around though <laughs> and also now guys i don't want to uh i should have done this earlier uh i want to thank uh rebecca for being in the chat you may know her as becca but i always call her rebecca i appreciate her help in the chat room and uh keeping up with all that because it's hard for us to keep up in the chat room if we miss your 
question or your comment that's not on purpose. Uh, I know I have a whole lot of stuff behind the scenes I have to do to keep the magic flowing. Uh, but uh, this next picture we're going to show you is another picture that Leo actually captured. Uh, it's pretty interesting too, and I think it was a was it over the shoulder yep. backwards type of thing, uh, which is kind of interesting. And if if it is what we think it is, and it could be, could may not be. Uh, you apparently caught it moving, uh, going from one location to the next. It's either, it's either, there's either two that look identical or it's in motion. And I, 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 I really don't know. Uh, and of course, again, if it's, it's you know, hard to see again, but we're going to do some enhancements. And I think that you will, it looks like if it's two, they're moving, uh, perfectly just like a uh you know people dancing or whatever because we're i i, I mean i see th there's three legs there yeah <laughs> see what happened first is is i show i sent the pictures from that day to nancy this i didn't see at all and then she uh sent it back and said uh, Paradolia with a question mark and so i had a look at it and while i was looking at the the part she wanted me to look at for uh where she was seeing where she was seeing faces i thought well yeah that's probably what it was but the thing is i looked down and then you add legs to the those two faces and that that is definitely a, another one i had to take a second look at and i needed to have you <laughs> have you take a look at what area was this the same area as the one where we think maybe one setting down is it pretty close or uh this is on the, actually on the on a path on the way down so again a matter of a quarter mile maybe if that same general basically general same area. Area. Yeah. okay let's go on to a, a couple enhancements of this which i think uh, that's just to zoom in on what we think may be one figure. It, to me, it kind of looks like legs. Uh, black and white version, which sometimes if you can go back. Yeah, that shows you, better. You'll see a little bit more, yeah. Uh, it, don't kinda, it don't look like shadow to me. Uh, but, you know. The other shadow that's there is, is, is it, that's the other shadow that's in the picture is different and it's not mm -hmm. how often do you see shadow that looks like legs i mean that's yeah. you see you get you get the pareidolia with the face you get you know a partial body or something like that but how often do you when you see those something like that and look down do you actually see legs there that's what that's why i thought okay i'm i'm gonna put this one off to the side and hold on to it I think that See, would be more revealing. <laughs> that that would be the first. It yeah, it is. That would be the first one there. It, and then just behind that, it's either that it was caught in motion or there's a second one there because there's a third leg. So yeah, that's just uh, it's really interesting. Uh, I was looking at the chat, so I'm sorry. I, I try to try. I do try to check it, but. Uh, it's hard for me. Okay, let's see. I think I got some more. Have I got any more on that? Maybe I don't. Let me check. No, that's that's the final one, which I still think that's probably the most revealing of the images. Let me see if I can uh, get back on that and zoom it in a little bit. Maybe. This kind of looks like legs. And I mean, they're proportion one's proportionate to the other two. That's a, that's yeah. That's kind of and this appears to be a, a bent as if it was moving or or something like that. Yeah, I I, I notice that that's that one's slightly bent, and the other one too looks as if if that leg would be yeah, it's it it would be bent too. Hmm, let's go. All right, let's go back. Uh, I thought this one was okay too. I like that one because you can see the second, the second yeah. figure, which seems to be facing to the left a little, whereas the other one is kind of facing 
almost uh, to the right, but ahead. Yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting. And like you say, we you caught these shooting a uh, over your shoulder. Yeah. So it, definitely, uh, when you're when you're when you're leaving an area, if you know it's active, or even if you don't know it's active, it's worth taking the shot to have a look. But just don't think that everything dark is 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 right. a Bigfoot because it's not. But and worst uh, case scenario, it's, it's worth the doing. Whole picture away, you know. Yeah, I mean it's it's worth doing it. And uh, the other one that I was talking about that I we should have had on but didn't was uh, I have one that is everything behind me is I shot it over my shoulder, shot four or five, and I have them all in a row. And but one of them there's not there's nothing but black hair behind me, and. Uh, I thought, well, then that's going to be some kind of a camera screw up or whatever. So I sent it to a former photographer friend of mine, and she said, "No, uh, that's that's hair. That there's a camera. There's nothing a camera would do to create that effect." So um, that was definitely interesting. That one was actually that close that it blocked out all light. And all there was was hair, and I had no idea it was it was even there. It would have been within within. Uh, it would have to be standing within inches to a foot behind me, but I had no 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 idea. Well, that brings me to a uh, another story that just happened a few days ago. Uh, my uncle, the one that's sick, he had uh, took his chair and sat out the side of his garage, and he was just sitting there. And he turned around and looked, and a bear had walked all the way down beside him. Uh, a bear can sneak up on you because, and I, I assume Bigfoot's uh, feet are basically the same as far as having the padding and the softness where they can actually ease up, you know, ease around through the forest without making a lot of racket if they want to. Uh, mm -hmm. A bear is like that. They can they can be right up on you, and you never know it because they're so quiet. And anyways, my uncle's sitting there, and the, <laughs> this big old bear just walks right up beside him. He just sits there and lets it walk on by. Uh, he didn't have his gun or anything. You, you know, I'm sure he was kind of scared about it. <laughs> we had another uh, a story that someone just told me last fall. Uh, they had a bear in their in their yard, and they got kind of got fed up. So Buddy grabbed his gun, went out, and rested his gun on a, on a tree branch and watched it. Expected the bear to to come back out and he was he was gonna fire at him anyway he he was there for several minutes and he kind of took the gun down kind of gave up turned around and there the bear had been sitting in there right behind him for god knows how long and it scared <laughs> the guy so bad he wet himself oh wow because the bear was right there looking right at him <laughs> that's uh yeah that would do so it. he circled he circled around and came back down and just sat there and decided I'm going to watch this fool and see what happens. Well, now you know I had a, a a big buck do me that way. I was in the in the forest and I don't know he was pretty good ways from me and I seen him. He looked right at me and he ran off up the mountain. So I just thought, man, that was you know what a big old buck had a big rack on it. And I just kept on walking through there and I, I maybe I was ginsenging. I think I was ginsenging. And I was looking around, taking my time. And, and that deer had circled up and around him behind me, and he got fairly close to me. And he stomped the ground and snorted at me. And, man, you talk about a guy whipping his head around quick. Never knew he was there. And, but he circled around. There he stood with that big old giant rack looking at me. <laughs> yeah, and when they let that snort out of them, that, that'll make you jump, too. If you're not, you, you, <laughs> you can be staring, staring right at them when they snort. You're not but you know what? It. If I was a couch researcher like everybody else, I would have never experienced that. Well, I shouldn't <laughs> say everybody else, but a lot of folks. That's true. Uh, you know, if I'm one of them uh, three weekends a year guys, you're not going to experience much. Sorry. Well, again, shorts. we don't like to name names, but one the one in particular, the the head of the Bigfoot police, two times a year to get pictures taken, and then... Two times. Well, so I think that happens. So that's a verifiable by hundreds of people. I think it's mostly a photo op for a lot of people. That's all it is for him. Yeah. Um, I can 
step 50 yards either direction and be in the woods. <laughs> so if I want a Photoshop, a uh, photo op, I'm sure I'm not going to waste my gas. <laughs> but oh, oh well. Uh, the thing is, we, me and you both, we're, we're at the truth and we're after a learning experience and we're not just necessarily a Bigfoot learning experience. We're wanting to learn about nature and uh, other animals and uh, see things that a lot of people don't ever see. And if we can share that information and pictures, and I know everybody's not able to get out. Uh, I've had several people over the years that uh, appreciated just me going out in the forest and taking pictures because they were physically not able to do that for one reason or the other. And uh, even sometimes video, they like videos of just walking through the forest because they're not able to do that. And I understand that. And uh, those are not the kind of people we're talking about. We're talking about people who are, are frauds is what they are. They're just frauds. They're liars, hoaxers, and frauds. And if that makes a bunch of them mad, whoop de doo I don't care. Uh, they're, they're, they're taking these pictures with their big stupid hats on and uh, uh, and they're going out here and standing in on a park somewhere in a pair of shorts and flip flops and, and, and they're a big time researcher. All right. So uh, don't get me started on that bunch. Well, I mean, really, what's it what's it take to land a, land something at, at at a conference? You find footprints one time, but if you get a big enough personality, there you go. You're a Bigfoot star. So, yeah. uh, but you know that's. Uh, I don't know. What can you do? And I guess the biggest thing for me on some of that stuff is uh, is that people look to them for answers. And their answers are coming from people like me and Leo. Because we get out there and we show what we find. Uh, for example, I've been documenting what I call a push pin for 20 years. Where a Bigfoot jabs a stick down in the ground, a branch. Uh, and now other people are starting to pick up on that and starting to do it. I even heard about a TV show highlighting that uh that evidence and i've i've been finding those for 20 years or more uh and talking about them but uh so really they're still in other people's work because they're too lazy to do their own research that's my opinion on it and i'm making well, friends well <laughs> <laughs> but really though i mean does a person need you know, a hundred thousand followers, if they're those kind of people, or do they need the 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 group that that we get that we know a lot of them we could contact any time to compare notes with. Sure. So, yeah. that, as far as the drama and all that, there's a lot of shady things going on. There's more. This subject gets is so so much more political than what people think it is it's a more we know it's about a crazy oh yeah that's the thing there's i got a ton of dirt on a ton of people but why if they don't do anything to me why why do it just to stir things up right. i'm too old for that but, but if they take a shot at me <laughs> then i don't up. have a problem firing back well, what gets me is because I know I got some dirt as well, and you and I've seen some of your mm -hmm. dirt, and I've heard about some of your dirt. And what gets me is that people will look to this, these people, as like they're the expert, uh, they're legitimate, and they're not. They're frauds. They're absolutely frauds, and they should never be supported. They should never be uh, propped up in the Bigfoot community or on television shows or in books or anything. They should be ostracized and never been al be allowed back in the Bigfoot community. That's how I feel about it because I take it somewhat seriously, and I'm a guy who likes to have fun. And that, that's the thing. It's There's nothing wrong with someone saying... I don't go out in the woods. I'm an enthusiast. And I have an interest in this. But people seem to think that admitting that that's all it is for them, that they don't go out in the woods, they think that that's a bad thing. No, what's a bad thing is pretending and acting like you do and like you know a whole lot of stuff that's when you don't because you don't go out. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm just a person with an interest. I don't physically go out in the woods and look, but I have an interest. You're there, That's allowed. You're allowed to do that. Sure. Uh, well, I have, I've got things that I like to do that I don't necessarily uh, participate in. Yeah, that you don't throw yourself in, into 100%. It's, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. What, what, well, the problem lies is when they try to pass themselves off 
as a big researcher and they know so much and and then when they don't and so i don't know i better watch out the duking it out here uh. <laughs> Well, man, like I said, it don't hurt to blow off a little bit of steam because out of, out of some of the other shows, and I'm not going to name name them, and one of them is gone, thankfully. Not that I watch a lot of shows, but that's all they do is cuss and go on and trash everybody else. Mm-hmm. And there's seven seconds of Bigfoot content, and that's in the in the title at the end, and the credit or the title at the first, and the credits at the end. Well, speaking of Bigfoot content. Uh, we are going to move on to topic number two. Yes, let's do that. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do? Hmm. Okay. You're, hand, you're handling the Grays Harbor one because I'll tell you, I'm, I've, I can't remember the cop's name. I was all mixed up this afternoon. Oh, so you're uh, come on now. I can't remember his last name. Well, that's all right. You know a little bit about the story. Well, yeah, right? I have a little bit of the story, yeah. But Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And we'll be slightly brief on it we oh that didn't work okay wait a minute let's try that again where'd it go oh here we go Boom. all right now i gotta get to my notes on this because this is really a uh this is really a big big story uh for those who do not know, and I can, I can actually show you the casting. Let me take that back off. I have a replica of, I have a replica of one of those tracks. Beautiful track. And this was a, uh, what would be, I think they say, they say it's a right foot, but uh, it's not. It's a left foot. Uh, Unless, unless the big toe and big foot grows on the wrong side, unless they've flipped it over and done it, which is a possibility. I don't know what this material is. Uh, but it's very durable. Uh, but this is probably the most most and best documented uh, track evidence that I know of. Uh Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at some of the chat stuff again. Now, none of it was pertaining to me. <laughs> um, okay, this is from uh, 1982 is when these tracks happened in a place called Grays Harbor. This was do- documented by the Grays Harbor Sheriff's Department. Uh, there was numerous tracks found in four separate areas. Uh, the areas was uh, were Abbott Hill, uh, Warman's Bar, Emma's Gate, and... Uh, Porter Creek. Uh, what is very interesting about this is that uh, these were seen in all of this general area, but the police were actually right in the area when some of the activity and stuff was going on. So it lent, uh, you know, uh, lends some credence to what was going on. On 4-22-82 in the area east, in the eastern part of Grays Harbor County, uh, there was a report made about large tracks. Uh, a policeman was escorted to the area to where the tracks were located. The tra- tracks were described the following way. Footprints with human features in an area uh, at the base of a fire trail. Uh, and according to the report, the, the tracks were 46 inches apart and measured 15 and a half inches long by three uh, by six and three quarter inches wide. Uh, of course, photographs were taken of the cast, uh, taken of the print, and a casting was made of the left foot. But of course, that is not all of the story. Uh, also, on four twenty two eighty two in Warman's Bar, W O R M A N S Bar B A R. I hope I'm hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, this is roughly around the same time as the uh, Abbott Hill tracks, which were in the eastern part of Grace Harbor. But these were found uh, seven miles west of where the original tracks were. Uh, they were found uh, along a river at a, at a place called Woman's Bar. Uh, during an investigation, it was discovered that there were two sets of tracks. Uh, 
Uh, see these tracks? They both started from under the water of the river and went onto the bank. So uh, the largest track was 17 inches by seven and a half inches wide, and the smallest was 15 and a half by six inches uh, wide. So evidently these Bigfoot were walking in the creek uh, or the river rather which is not really unheard or heard of because I've, I've got a neighbor here who who saw one in the creek uh, I don't know probably 10 years ago maybe a little more uh, don't know what it was doing in the creek but it was in the creek and I'm sure Bigfoot does get in the creek and there's some debate whether Bigfoot can swim and I would say they probably can I don't think there's much debate about that there, there, there really shouldn't be. I mean, if there's one thing that, you know, one one could safely feel comfortable in assuming <laughs> is that Bigfoot could probably swim. Yeah, I think. Well, if the water's not very deep, it probably wouldn't have to. But well, that's the th I, I've I've seen. We'll talk. I'll talk about that a little later when we get to the other subject that we're going to move on to. Um, I've seen one run across water, and my very first sighting. He was squatted down with his arm in the water. Uh, he just had the one arm in the water for, I don't know if he had, he was cut or if he was uh, doing some ha doing hand fishing or what. But when he stood up and turned around, he, he held his arm up in front of him. He just had the one arm. What? So for whatever reason, he had one arm in the water. Uh, these tracks that were found next to the river at Woman's Bar area, what, here's something that's kind of interesting about this. Uh, they took photographs of the tracks, and then they returned later to make plaster casts of them, but only found portions of the track. It seemed that something had uh, kind of, you know, messed up the tracks and kind of hit them or whatever you want to call it, brushed them away or, or whatever, which I thought was kind of neat, kind of interesting to the story. Well, know, just just the fact that just the fact that the that the police actually acted professional about it and and cast cast these tracks um, and didn't didn't try to hide the whole thing and or distance themselves from it. I mean, I know of a former sheriff down your way that went ahead with his Bigfoot sighting. And he got tormented to the point where he didn't end up running for sheriff again over reporting the sighting. So uh, the fact that they took it serious and didn't try to distance himself from it and said this, you know, we're not saying what it is, but this is it's these tracks are are legit. They're here and we're looking into it uh, on these tracks here. Now, that was those first two events were on the same day. Well, five days later on 4-27-82, Officer Jim Young of Oakville Police Department reported that more tracks have been found at Emma, at Emma's Gate. Uh, the tracks were discovered along the uh, Chihalis River, I guess how you say that, uh, in, the, in the area known as Emma's Gate boat launch. Uh, once again, Officer Officers were uh, on the scene to investigate. The tracks were photographed and measured. Uh, the measures tracks were 15 inches long by six and a quarter wide, and the track line was approximately one mile. You're, uh, you're talking about one mile of tracks. Wow, that's amazing. I can't. I can't. Uh... I've seen I've seen probably going out on on to the ice in the winter time. I've seen a dozen, maybe maybe closer to twenty, but I can't imagine that at all. Can you imagine walking up on that? You were we're out there looking for tracks and walking up on a trackway like that. Well. I found over 30 in one line. Yeah, that's true. But I found in that same line, which are some spaces in between it, I probably found close to 100, but not, I mean, that was just in a, <laughs> you know, that's not a very far area. I mean, you talk about a mile long. 
uh, and what's, uh, what I find kind of interesting on this, these tracks is that some of the tracks are basically the same size, but some of them appear to be a little bit wider. And I wonder if it's just because of the flexing of the foot or maybe because of the mud or something like that made them appear just a little bit wider at times or, or just a touch longer. The ground, I mean, look how many slide tracks I get. So the, the ground can make them appear different when it's actually the same the same right. track. I mean, it's, it's, I get because I have so much pine pine needles on the ground in, in, in one area that they only really leave a, a good track if they're moving fast or they're, you know, they're moving along with some some effort and they kind of kick the, the pine needles back. But then I can, uh, if I look at that and look at a, a track that I find like down down by the water, a uh, lot more detail. But I I know it's still the same one because you can if it's in in within a certain range on either length or width, then you you're you know you can be pretty safe that it's the same the same one. It's just the fact that the ground conditions are different. Uh, there was another report that goes along with this. This is Grays Harbor. Uh, this was on 523 which was close to a month later in 1982 and this is kind of interesting because of who was reporting it uh, it was a pastor of a local church uh, report reported it and requested an investigation of some large foot tracks uh, once taken to the area of the tracks uh, the tracks they observed four tracks they were photographed measured and two castings were made other evidence was found in the area. Numerous branches were broken from 8 feet to approximately 11 feet in the trees. Uh, one tree had scratch marks indicating five fingernails. Uh, the portion of the trees taken and stored for evidence. So they actually took some of these broken branches as evidence. Uh, the police evidently done a good job on this. Uh, after more investigation, more tracks were found on the other side of the creek. The tracks were followed for about one and a half miles. Uh, so you got we got two different. It, I don't really give the size on that one than, uh, on those tracks, but uh, I would imagine it was roughly the same. But so we got one track line that's uh, approximately one mile long. Then we got another tracks were found for a mile and a half, along with other evidence. Uh, there were uh, four main people. Who, uh, from the police department that really investigated this. Uh, uh, Dennis Hayford, uh, Michael Beam, uh, Verl Hutchinson, and Ronald White, uh, uh, two deputies and two sergeants. Uh, evidence collected were eight plaster cast casting to the foot tracks, uh, 24 black and white 35 millimeter Kodak photos, 36 Kodachrome 35 millimeter slides of the scene, uh, 12 color photos, uh, 35 millimeter of the scene. And of course, I do own a replica of that, of that track I showed you there. But, and you can, you can still buy those. Uh, you can still buy those as far as I know on a place called uh, Skulls Unlimited, I think was the name of it. But I find that uh, very intriguing. And uh, I think it's probably one of the best, especially for that time frame. Uh, it might be something a little newer now that's, been documented better and uh, more professional but for the time period I'd say that's one of the most well documented track cases ever definitely and like I said the way that the police handled it was shocking to me because it, that's not what you typically not what you typically hear of but they documented it very well uh, yeah most most of the time if you called and said something like that they would either would not come or they just kind of laugh at you. <laughs> you know? And uh, I got to answer a question in the chat from Evan. Did the Gaspro run through the stream? No, that, that stream runs into the Gaspro River. And obviously the Gaspro run there because it's called the Gaspro River. But anyway, uh, no, it's, there's there's trout in there, but, but that's, that's it as far as that brook but that runs into the 
into the Asperro River. So, also, Rebecca asked a question about those uh, the tracks that were left, and somebody you know covered appeared to cover them up. And I've heard reports of Bigfoot doing that before that they would uh, conceal their tracks or hide their tracks. But I I do know that uh, from what I've seen is some some they, they teach the younger ones to walk in the foot tracks of the larger ones to help conceal tracks. Uh, I know, uh, you know I found that to be pretty much uh, consistent. Uh, but could they possibly took a tree branch or something like that and messed up the tracks? I think it's very possible. I think they're smart enough to know that, especially if they had saw people there looking at them. Uh, and maybe they'd already seen them, cast them somewhere else or something, you know? Well, really, I mean, and uh, the, uh, there's a 2018 track that I have. I think it was 2018. Uh, 2018 track that I have. It's an adult track on the side of a field mm -hmm. and laying diagonally. It's a little itty bitty track right diagonally in the track but i've also but you also though if you think back to when you were a kid i know i've done it like the the adult walking in front of me or whatever on a rainy day hop from one footprint to the other so you know with the way that they live them that's that's it's not that wouldn't just be a way to you know stroll along when you're bored that that's a matter of survival that's true uh, well, I guess we're on to the next big topic, correct? I think so. Well, let me let me load up a. Uh, load up but a the other thing about Grays Harbor, though, is it it has remained an active active place. There's some ther thermal taken here a few a few years back, and it's still there's still plenty right. of, of of sightings reported in Grays Harbor. And it right, it sense. wasn't just a one off event. No, no. no. And never no more. Uh, it was actually something that, that has continued over the years. All right. Now this next uh, little topic we got, and I know time's running kind of late on us. That's okay. We got a lot to say, uh, <laughs> don't we, Leo? Well, we've been off air for what four or five weeks now, so uh, almost two months, I guess. Uh, wow, uh, it's been a while. Uh, this next uh, topic is a little bit controversial. Uh, which what isn't in the Bigfoot world, uh, and I know you have opinions about this, and, we're, and I think we should talk about it and maybe get other people's opinion. And uh, oh, what do you think about that? You know who that is, right? Here, here's the thing. The hot with this one, the, the, with this one, I. Okay, I completely understand why, and I'm not talking about the jerk skeptics that call everything fake. I don't, I don't, I don't care what they have to say, mm -hmm. but I under, I can understand the skeptical part. Why people are skeptical with this film? On the other hand, uh, film, the, 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 the film, the film itself, don't lie. So, but I, but I do see what I, I do understand because what you do have to take, whether you want to or not, you have to take in the background, you know, the backstory and all that. And that's where, if it was, if it, if it wasn't for that, I don't think people would be as skeptical as what they are. Well, here is, uh, let me give just a little bit of information about it. Uh, the film is, was shot by a man by the name of Harley Hoffman. It was actually uh, shot in 2001 and uh, took place in British Columbia. Uh, but he didn't release the footage publicly, what well, little bit he did release, uh, to April the 8th, 2006. So we had a five, almost five year, roughly a five year uh, layover there before he actually released the footage. Uh, and I got some more pictures I want to share. I was just. Uh, I just kind of like the little animated one there because you can see the movement. Uh, let's get on to the next one. That's a still shot from the from the video, and uh, maybe you would like to comment on why you think's wrong with this thing's back. 
It seems odd to me. Well, here, it, here's what I mean by I can see why people are skeptical. Because if you were to take, say, the newer, well, the style, style football pads, and I'm not a football player, but uh, or even a, a fan. Sorry, but I'm not. It's too slow. Uh, but if you were to t if you were to take football pads from that time or even slightly before and covered them with hair, it almost it would almost fit the shape that's going across his shoulders. Sorry, but that's that's what I see. I'm seeing that as a reason why people could be skeptical about this. I'm not saying that's what it is, but it does kind of line up. Well, I, I can understand that aspect of it, too. I think the main controversy comes because of how it was, re was released. He released the footage on supposedly his brother, and there's some, there's some, uh, his twin brother. There's some controversy about that, whether there even is a twin brother. Uh, he released it on a website called searchingforsanta.com. Uh, it stayed up for years, and supposedly it was his brother. And they actually turned out a video, a little documentary kids type, I guess it was kids type thing, but some people took it as serious uh, where he was looking for Santa Claus, uh, a real Santa Claus. I mean, uh, and so he released it on the footage on uh, his, supposedly his brother's uh, website. Uh, like I said, there's some controversy whether he even has a brother. Or, or not, and I think that initially caused a lot of red flags for people. Uh, but I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I watched a little searching for Santa Claus thing once it was finished, and it was just kind of like a Christmas movie to me. I mean, I didn't take it. <laughs> I didn't take it as the gospel or anything like that. I thought it was just something they done for fun, kind of. No, but that's that's the thing. Obviously, these two adults. Or at least one adult, because whether whether his brother Hutch is even a person, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's people's biggest problem with the, this film mm -hmm. is the whole the the searching for Santa backstory to it. But really, were we supposed to take the searching for Santa thing serious? No, obviously these are grown men. So, well, they're crazy enough to go looking for Santa. No, they're crazy enough to entertain kids. They're right. entertain. I mean, they're they're entertaining kids. They're not actually out there looking for Santa Claus. But they—that's what I mean. They, these idiots that know everything but know nothing at the same time take something innocent like that and they will twist it into well, the guy he's a faker because he's out searching for Santa Claus. Oh, for heaven's sakes! He's trying. He's doing something for, to entertain kids. Don't. That's it, but that's how they work. They just anything at all that they can grasp onto, try to twist it around. Well, but no. that, that was really the biggest problem with this film was the backstory. Because if you I look think at that, the really film, that really started it. Yeah, I think that yeah. really started it off in the wrong direction. It, it's and it was <laughs> probably. I didn't actually get to see the full searching for Santa thing. Um, it, was, it used to be online. I don't know if it still is. But. I, I think it's down now. Uh, the last time I checked for anything more, it, it was down. Um, Maybe well, somewhere where I haven't found it, but... I thought the footage was good enough that it should have went, been investigated more. Uh, somebody should have tracked the guy down and interviewed him and all that kind of stuff. And Maybe they did and they had not released it or they couldn't find him or he didn't want to do it. I don't know. Uh, but this photograph here where we've zoomed it in... It has some things I like and some things I don't like. Uh, the things I like are those, I guess you could call it matted hair or you could call it uh, cyst or bug bites. Somebody pointed out it could be bug bites. Those little knots that are in the skin or on the, in the hair. Uh, I found that's something I do like uh, that I don't think would be a detail that uh, somebody who was pulling the hoax would, would probably think about. Uh, and but what I don't like, I don't like where the arm bends. Uh, I don't. I think that maybe there's shadow there, or it's an angle or something. But it seems like the arm is not bending where it should to me. But then again, the face looks more uh, looks a little, a little better there for me as well. Uh, could this possibly be a uh, old or sick Bigfoot? It 
possibly could if it's if it's legitimate. What, for what me, do you think the, about? That? And for me, the on, on the on on the positive side of it, um, uh, same thing. The mat, definitely the 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 matted hair. I do, I think if this is is legit i don't it's not it's not the same type same kind same species whatever you want to look at as what i you know have have encountered myself but this would to me seems to even though i guess he had some type of of uh interaction type thing going at the time uh this looks more animal like than what i what what i've seen myself mm -hmm. so but uh, i mean the back and all of that and you're right that seems like an awfully high bend on that <laughs> on that yeah. arm mm -hmm. and uh, really i didn't pay much much attention to that because uh, i know that People expect arms to be hung, hung down to their knees or even down, down to their ankles and the knuckles dragging on the ground. And that's not always the case, but that boy, that elbow is high. Yeah, see, um, you can see it even better in that photograph. Yeah. The elbow is pretty high. But that's, like, a, again, I have to say, if it's fake, it's it's a fine it, it's a fine suit. And we don't know enough about them to know would they have the money to the knowledge or in the, or the money to buy and or make this suit because there's a lot of, there's a lot of detail to it and there's a lot of detail to the to the film and but the thing i didn't like in the film is there there are parts of that film where they show where you can see the legs and the legs have that baggy a bit of that baggy suit look to them mm -hmm. yeah yeah, you can and, see it kind of walking around. Yeah, yeah, and it's got that kind of that baggy suit look. But then someone pointed out it only looks that way when the arm moves back. So when the arm comes down, could make the leg look wider. But I don't know. It's just hard to say. I mean, it's uh, I, I I find the movement of the figure kind of interesting. I think it moves. Fairly well. It's got kind of a neat movement to it. Yeah. Well, that's it. Uh, these, whoever, if someone d did this, boy, they put time, they put money, and have obvi obviously have some some knowledge because it's. I, I, you, we've been doing this a long time, and I can't look at that and automatically dismiss it. No, that's me. I can't either. I mean, and it's just that's one of those we probably will never know the answer to. Uh, it's got many things I like. The movement is really fluid. Uh, you know, I don't know. And the guy, when he's actually telling about it, uh, if you've anybody who's never watched, he's talking about how it's absolutely real. These things are absolutely real, and he's really convincing in his, his speech about it uh, that he's he is real and 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 says take take this film and and uh, and test it have, apply the mm -hmm. same principles to this as you do other things it's yeah. real so I mean he wasn't he was pretty bold about it but I, the shoulder thing there I could see why people would think that was hair covered shoulder pads yeah. the in the part of the film where he walks that kind of bothers me but i mean there's there's the little thing on the side of his head there that a lot of people think is an ear and i don't think it's an ear at all it, to me it looks like a piece of matted hair that it might have even torn off or or cut off because that the piece that sticks up if you took a ponytail and you cut the, that ponytail off, if you put an elastic and cut the ponytail off, the little bit that was left on the elastic, besides the ponytail itself, on the side that you cut, the hair would go up like that. And that's, it looks like he, at one point, either pulled or cut something out of his hair. 
to me too if, if this is a real bigfoot i would say it's probably in its last yeah it's rough he's in shape. rough shape yeah you know that's and i know a lot of people say this could be shoulder pads or whatever but it all could also could be malnutrition and things like that that would cause this uh so you know let's just that we will never know but if it's real i would say that bigfoot didn't have long to live <laughs> no and that's the thing people will look at it and they'll say this is fake why because it is no no can you give me a better reason than that because it's a guy in a suit i've never and i don't claim to be no video guy i'm not I'm far from it but i know what i've seen and i can only compare it to that and other people's things that I, that they've shown me and yeah if it is real he don't look well i'll say that yeah. So, well, I heard some people say they thought that was a baby on his back, but I don't think. It nah, I don't see it. that. I, I know I've heard, I've heard that too, but I don't see that. I don't see any. If it's real, I think it's its shoulder blades and yeah. backbone and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm thinking the same way. Yeah, very sickly. Yeah, well, if you've ever seen a sick bear, they kind of look similar to that, really. Yeah, he's he, he's. Uh pretty patchy and it's right as normal for the hunchback but wow i mean he's he's in yeah. well you even people you know as people get older a lot of times they kind of get hunched over too so if it's you know could possibly be that but i always i always kind of like the video i didn't particularly like the backstory and that kind of thing and for a long time i didn't even know about the post fifth twin brother and all that controversy i just took it face value and you know years ago but I always liked the actual video of it walking by this tree thing. And, but I thought it looked bad. It looked sick, you know. Well, and and there there have been a few people that, that came forward claiming to be Hoffman and or a relative of Hoffman. But they didn't pass the sniff test. And it just some anonymous troll trying to, you know. Do their well, see, that goes back to the trouble with Bigfoot. You, it's, yeah. it's filled up with people that are frauds. And uh, if something catches a little bit of attention, it's nothing for somebody to try to swoop in and get a little bit of the credit from it, either positively or negatively, uh, saying that it's a hoax, I was a guy in a suit, no, nah, that's my brother, or, you know, uh, which is the bad part of Bigfoot that I just, I don't know, sometimes it's so frustrating. I just like to pull my hair out what little I got left. <laughs> yeah, it's irritating, and uh, I'm at a point now, and have been for quite some time. That part, I don't, I can't, I can't let it bother me because if I do, then <laughs> it'll it'll be done and over with, or or worse some, so, some days it don't bother me but some days it makes me want to scream oh no i mean i still have little individual things that happen where i you know you you want to smack someone upside the head and tell them to wake up and open their <laughs> eyes but mm. but i mean really though honestly the it's clear so people were going to attack it they were going to find anything wrong with it that they possibly could and they're going to criticize it they're going to do everything everything they can to shut it down but the big thing that I remember with this, and I only I only got online in 2009, 2010, and so and this was so that this was pretty still it's still pretty hot at that time, still being debated left, right, and center, and uh, but it just it seemed to just once somebody of uh, that was anointed to an important position in the Bigfoot world said. It's fake. End of story. It, it 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 died out really quick, and I I think it I think it does a little better than that to, than to just be throw be throwing it out on a on a, be based on the backstory of guys that have a searching for Santa website. They're not trying well, to be deceitful. They're enter. They're, it's an it was an entertainment website. There's a lot worse on the internet than searching for Santa. <laughs> Well, it makes me wonder, though, why the guy never got into the Bigfoot community or he never done interviews or 
Uh, I don't know. I guess he's still alive. Maybe maybe he passed away. I don't know. But uh, you would yeah, think but... you think somebody would have would have sought him out and and, and interviewed him or, or something. But it didn't happen that I know of. Well, that's what I mean. It just it was there. It was really hot at one time. Like when I came in in two thousand nine, it was really hot. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it just dropped. It just dropped off. So and I don't think it's ever been debunked officially. I mean, some people oh, say no, you've got your but... you've got your usual suspects that call everything fake. That well, it's fake. So yeah. that's. And then yeah. when they say it, it's taken as gospel. But is uh, I've never seen anybody put any effort into saying why it would be fake. And the fact is, they can't. They weren't there. The best they could do was guess. I mean, that's like us. We we pointed yep. out a few things. We like the elbow bend and things like that. But uh, I mean, we probably pointed out more than a lot of people who just called it a hoax based on uh, he don't have a twin brother or he does have a twin brother and it's searching for Santa and you know. So I don't know. That, like you say, it's uh, these uh, armchair couch guys who. Uh, you know they can't. They just couldn't get out and do what we do. I mean, that's just true. I mean, mad or not, that's just true. Well, I mean, take somebody. Well, and before I get into that, really though, if you knew what you knew now about the online Bigfoot world, <laughs> would you would you have would you have still gone? I know you still would have gone, gone ahead with research, sure. but there's the possibility he stepped into the online Bigfoot world and saw what they were saying, doing it with his film and said, uh, I'm not having anything. This is crazy. Cause well, I'll tell you the, the Bigfoot world is so much crazier than what I was prepared for. Well, that's me. I didn't even know there was such a big interest in Bigfoot. No, me either. I, mean, I, I looked at videos and things like that and had her interest in it. And, uh, but I didn't put nothing really on. I, I was a few gaming forums that I had that I would share my thoughts on uh, a video or something like that. But and before I started actually doing stuff publicly and sharing stuff publicly, I didn't know there was that kind of interest in Bigfoot. And then once you get into the community stuff, I mean, it just branches off in every which direction in the world and nobody agrees on anything. And if you don't agree with this group, you, you got to hate them. And if, if you don't believe that uh, Bigfoot could turn into a giraffe, or you can't be friends with these guys. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, and like I say, m most of what you see online is it's baloney. <laughs> I'm making friends tonight, I believe. Yeah, but it's well. You're not you're not saying anything that isn't true. You're not getting on here and ripping into one person no, rather than to their face doing it. But saying general things that are true about this asylum. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, let me tell you this. This is kind of well stupid. Is uh, <laughs> well stupid? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a person tell me recently, and I think he sent me an email that. Anytime a Bigfoot is photographed, if you really look, there's at least three aliens in the picture with it. And all this time, I thought it was a dozen. Well, I mean, I don't know, man. We got a mental health problem <laughs> in the United States uh, or the world. Every picture does not have three aliens in it. <laughs> Of a Bigfoot. They said every time you see a picture of a Bigfoot, if you really look, there's at least three aliens in every picture of a Bigfoot. I don't know how people get this kind of stuff, man. <laughs> oh, I know a few sources of where of where they get it, but it, it's... I don't know. But again, with me now, I have to take that and just say I don't care. Not my circus, not my monkeys, not my yeah. half, half dozen Bigfoot in every picture, not my aliens. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just don't care anymore. Uh, I don't know. I just, what can you do? I don't know. Uh, so much kind of funny. But I've had people send me emails uh, that are just, I don't know, it's just no logical explanation for what they're trying to tell me. In the, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's just crazy stuff. To me, it's crazy stuff. I don't, you know. Uh, aliens in every picture are big, but I just don't get it. But. <laughs> uh, 
That's a new one. That's that, that's a new one. I mean, you and I were talking about the you have to be pure of heart in order to see them, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous." Because I've been told uh, that. I know, and I, I've read it a thousand times. It's uh, it's in all of the the really. Uh, how do I put this nicely, or do I even care if I put it nicely? It's in the more the groups with the more uh, ones that have set set down and have tea parties with Bigfoot and aliens and all that crap at the same time. So it's with them. No, well, you ha you can't. You're not going to see them if you're not, if you're not pure of heart. And what I, and what I said to you at the time is, you know what? I'm not a bad person. I don't I don't purposely hurt people unless they. You know, I'll defend myself, obviously. I, the bad habits that I had, I, I straightened them out and all of those things. But this be, be pure of heart stuff or you can't see them. I, I've been seeing them now for 20 years and uh, 25 years. And boy, I was no saint when I was younger. I didn't, you know, I didn't purposely do nasty things. I was never into thievery or or do, you know, nasty things to people. I basically just raised hell. But I, I, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't any saint. So you know what, you do not have to be a saint. I would imagine they pick up on a, on a vibe from you, just like you pick up a vibe from, on, from other people. Right. Well, so, I've met people that I thought were, man, there's something ain't right about that dude. I mean, you've met people. Oh like yeah. That. Uh, I'm sure that they probably get vibes like that. Just, like everybody else well I've met, I've met people that just i just felt like there was something not right with them and i'm sure they they do it with people out in the woods well i mean i mean they have to there's a there's a disturbance in what they're what they're used to so they're going to hone in on that mm -hmm. if someone's standing in your living room you're going to know so <laughs> i mean you, and oh yeah there are there are people out that i have met in my life that made my skin crawl and I don't think I was wrong about them and of one one instance that I know for a fact I wasn't wrong about them and it's you know bad stuff not stuff that's you know, really bad stuff uh, stuff that you that in my mind a person should be hung for but that's a whole other show <laughs> um, yeah but uh, it not condone violence no <laughs> but this idea that you have to be some kind of a saint and a, and you know you got to be Mary friggin Poppins? No, you don't. You got to go in with with decent intentions and don't disrespect their home and don't act like a jerk while you're in there. That's about it. This pure of heart stuff, no way. Because I I'd have never seen anything, especially at that time. I was still only twenty, so I had I still had some smartening up to do. Well, I think about people too that seen Bigfoot. I know several different. Well, personally, I know several people that seen Bigfoot, and they're from different walks of life. Some of them, yeah, were are really super good people, and the others are super good people, but they don't live a saintly life. I mean, they do things mm -hmm. that don't make them a terrible person or anything. But uh, uh, no one, I've heard people say that Bigfoot has to know that your intentions are good to uh, interact with you or let you see them or have any kind of experience. But I don't necessarily think that's even true. Uh, I think you can go in and be a, a jerk and, uh, and you know, they will avoid you. Uh, but I don't think just uh, a chance encounters, uh, they don't care. That, happen, that can happen to anybody. Uh, well, I know of, I know of complete jerks that, <laughs> that yeah. it has happened to. So, yeah. No kidding, <laughs> but yeah, that's one that that really get, that gets me, and it's the hypocrisy of it that gets me because they say you have to be pure of heart and all all of this and that, and meanwhile they're on there blowing up their pictures of nothing, so they're on there telling you you have to be pure of heart, but I'm going to sit here and lie to you, and it's okay. Yeah, that's what that's what oh man that gets under my skin. You know, and I know we've maybe tonight we've said a, a, some things that's kind of out of character for me and, and for you. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, we got people who are uh, are do, putting out material that really hurts research. I recently made a little stupid video on our YouTube channel where I I said that I think that really the advancement of real Bigfoot research is done. 
there's not going to be any advancement in Bigfoot research because it's not mainstream. It's not instant gratification. They're looking for people to tell fantastic stories about Bigfoot morphing into trees and dinosaurs and never all this other stuff and flying spaceships and going through portals and um, making a homemade pie and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so real research where you go out into the mountains, you look for uh, physical evidence uh, and you try to film something that's pretty much over with. It's not going to happen. Uh, and nothing you could bring back is going to uh, it's going to gain any ground because you got old Joe Bob over here talking about, uh, yeah, man, I seen them big feet. They can be coming in having breakfast with me about for three months now. <laughs> and that's the guy they want to talk to. And, you know, Joe Bob married to his sister and his uncle was his dad and all that stuff. So, you know, come on, man. Let's let's get real about it. If we're, if we're really going to try to solve this mystery, let's let's push people like that to the side and let's get to something that's real. People who really go out and look for these things and look for evidence. Not some guy who's uh, on his third bag of mushrooms and uh, his second case of beer. You know, and and want to tell us about the meaning of life. It's just it's just ridiculous, and it's so frustrating for me because I do take it seriously. And the thing, it, the thing is, if if we can, because we both have people that we can share that 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 we can compare notes with, but can you imagine sure. if we got rid of the other ones? And everybody was comparing notes. Do you know how many patterns, how many different possible sure. different species that, that we could be talking about? Um, uh, we you know, talked about this before, Leo. What about if we had a database of stick formations that was that everybody that was a true researcher who actually gets out and does something uh, actually could submit these photographs? And then we had a large database that we could go to and look at all these different structures from different parts of the country and the world for that matter. And maybe and so we could unravel. That would be amazing. But the problem with that is at the, the current problem with that is somebody will, will message me and they'll, they'll ask my opinion on something. What do you think this one here means? Or have you seen something like this? And the first couple of pictures they send me, I'll think, well, this is kind of cool. And then they'll tell, send me something that, and they'll ask the question, uh, what do you think made this? And my answer is you. And I hate doing, I hate having to do that. Yeah. I think you made it. That's sorry, but I, I think you did. When you have perfect, a whole, you know, a whole area of, of, filled in perfect structures all in one area uh some tri triangle shapes and all of that and they're all perfect there's not a stick falling down there's not you know it's all intact what do i think made it you made it and you just screwed up you know we could have compared notes on these things mm -hmm. learned from each other and you screwed it up because you just tried to feed me some bullshit. well i th also think that we i think we have people who are in the community on purpose Yep. to make things muddy and keep everything all confusing. And uh, I think there's even people in the community who make up just outlandish stories. Uh, I mean, you can make up the, I get up in the morning and make the craziest, stupidest, unreal made up story about Bigfoot. And there'd be somebody who would leave it. You couldn't make it stupid enough or crazy enough that somebody wouldn't believe it. Well, because they're always, what I get a kick out of is, is if people will say, well, I like so-and-so. No, you like the public so-and-so. Do you actually know them? Well, I talked to them on Facebook. <laughs> well, I ask you again, do you actually know them? Because yeah. thinking they're a nice guy because you talk to them on Facebook, <laughs> don't make it, one, it doesn't make you friends. It, it takes more than that. You don't really know them. And what's in it for them? Yeah, that's like so, those guys who uh, change their relationship status every week, and it's some girl from Vietnam they've never met, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or somewhere like that. But oh, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> but I do think there's a, a, a effort to keep things kind of uh, muddy. 
Now, should we go on to the next topic, or I know time's getting low, or do you want to keep on going, or? Well, we've got ten minutes, so we'll talk about. Well, actually, what I mean that deserves almost a half show of its own. So why don't why don't we just update people on what what we've got ten, ten minutes left? So well, I've got people... two topics. I've got two topics that I had left. Which one of them was uh, about Patty, which I know that would be a long one. So we can carry it over maybe next time. And then I had the bonus uh, thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, that's right. Uh, I could talk about the bonus thing for about three or four minutes, and then we could finish off with the thing, uh, which I, maybe the bonus stuff ain't worth it. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure uh, it I'll, is, but you're second-guessing yourself. But... Well, I'll, I'll just <laughs> mention it this way, because uh, I don't want to uh, run the people down. They made an error. They've not admitted the error yet. They're still trying to uh, prop it up. Anyways, it's a, it's a documentary, Flash of Sasquatch. Uh, from what I've heard, and I know it's got some great people in it, people I know, people I respect, people who are credible. Uh, and from what I hear, the documentary is real good. But Dr. Jeff Meldrum put up a picture today of a uh, of a the end one of the end stories of in that and it's clearly a suit it's the old cheap suit that everybody uses the old red with the crooked mouth faced guy uh bigfoot that they used uh at the end of the documentary and a lot of people they're taking a lot of uh hits on it but uh, about it being fake it's i mean if you'd have done a search for bigfoot costumes that would have came up they the the director said they did do that uh but a lot of people are I feel like it really took the credibility away from the documentary. And in some ways, I guess it, it did because that clip is going to overshadow uh, the documentary. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the picture. And uh, what people don't understand is that uh, here's a screenshot. Let me get the, let me open this up and I'll share it because I don't want to, I shouldn't. Uh, talk about it without showing the picture because people will think I'm just being a butthole. Uh, uh, let me share it over on the screen. Right here. Uh, obvious. Oh, that one. Okay. Obvious that this is a the common. It's it's, it's the so the suit. It's the suit that everybody uses. And this yeah. was associated with a witness testimony at the end of the documentary. Uh, if I remember correctly on what they told me, I've not watched the documentary, even though I know a lot of people have seen it and a lot of people I respect. Uh, and I think are good people and, and honest people. Uh, but this last story, the way I understood it, was a woman and her husband was in an airplane flying. I think it's in Alaska. And I guess they took these pictures out the window of the airplane or whatever, this Bigfoot running up the hill. Uh, and uh, what, you know, everybody can, that then Bigfoot knows that this is the old cheap suit that everybody and their grandma has used. And what people don't realize is that someone like Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who is uh, a very intelligent man, uh, has all these degrees and I've, I've worked with a lot of people like that and my friend guy from arkansas is a, a, a academic guy what they don't realize about these people is that they really look at things like this and uh, anything that might hit their credibility uh, it really bothers them uh, i know my friend guy he's really concerned about his reputation and which we all should be but people who have these uh, big degrees and are really super intelligent people. They worked hard to get those degrees and they don't want to be involved in anything that would t make them take a hit to their credibility and their degrees that they worked hard hard to get. So I think uh, Jeff Medrum was kind of a little, I'll say a little bit maybe upset or didn't like the idea that he was in the documentary and at the end of it they show this obviously hoax video at the end of it and I, I that was my little bonus footage tonight and i'm not getting on uh, to the directors too bad uh, i don't they're not researchers from my understanding 
but this should have automatically not pass the smell test, regardless of the witness testimony. It should not have passed. So, so, so this is not labeled anywhere as a reenactment? No, it is passed as truth, as a real Bigfoot sighting. Oh, man, then that's not good. Based on the witness, what the witness said. Uh, right there is, uh, if you want to read what Dr. Meldrum said about it, this is, uh, this is what he said about it. It was a, a oh, I've, I've, yeah, I've been seeing ads for this for this this yeah. one here. This and it's got a lot of good people in it that I like. And uh, and it, uh, you know, the director should have never got this through there. And what made it uh, slightly worse is that they tried to defend the footage, and said it's not the same costume, and said it's a little bit different, and and it's obviously the same costume that they would have been so much better oh, off man. just saying hey we got duped we didn't know any better we're sorry and we'll try to do better from here on in they would have been better off doing that than trying to defend it that's and again they know you have to know everybody yeah. my cat knows that suit so <laughs> uh, i'm sure that they know well, but, this but rather director, than this is the director right here he says it's not the same costume. There are a few reasons why it's not, which is why we included it in the film. For one, look at the face in our folder. There are no details of face that has been manipulated. You don't have to manipulate it. You it's don't manipulate true. it. That's that costume. That costume is the 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 go to costume, I think. I mean Well the only thing wow. was Doctor Meldrum thought it was the Idaho, the the footage from the drone in Idaho, which we all know was a fake. Uh, and this is where the director, one of the directors or people involved in the film. And again, I'm not getting on to this guy. Uh, he's made a mistake and it happens. We all do it. Uh, it's very similar, but it's incorrect. He says that's not the photo, not the uh, same suit, but it is the same suit. <laughs> uh, and people hit him pretty hard. And you see there, you can tell this is a definitely a suit. You can see the bag, and it don't even fit well. And to me, it don't fit well. That's horrible. That's your typical horrible, dumpy mm -hmm. Bigfoot suit hoax. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know the people, so I'm not attacking them. I'm just saying there's no way, if you know anything about this subject, have been in it for more than eight days, yeah. that you don't take one look at that and say, I know that suit. Well, they, the, there was, uh, from my understanding, there was two or three people that helped create the film. And like I say, there's a lot of good people in the film that I really like and respect and are honest research people. And, but they included this here at the end of the film, and it kind of brought down the whole film, from my understanding, uh, because it's hoax. It's obvious hoax. It, shouldn't, it should not have been included, and if it had been ran, it should have been uh, uh, some kind of disclaimer. Absolutely. Should have had a disclaimer on it. It shouldn't have been, uh, and then to get online and defend it, try to defend it against uh, Dr. Meldrum's post is just ridiculous. Just say, hey, we got duped. Uh, we made a mistake. We're sorry. Uh, we'll try not to let this happen again. Uh, you know, that's all you can do because this is obviously not a real <laughs> big foot. <laughs> But that was my little bonus content, I guess, that I wanted to talk about just because uh, I went back and forth a little bit with the director, you know, and he says he wasn't defending it. But there's page at him and post at a post, so he's defending the witness and the uh, and the and the video. And it's just obviously even Stacy Brown uh, got, got involved a little bit with it. Not Stacy. He's so quiet. Hey, hey, man, Stacey, I like Stacy. Stacy. Oh, I, I don't. I got nothing against Stacy Brown. At all. <laughs> to hear you say even Stacy got involved, or yeah. Well, you know, he's yeah. not been online much the last little bit. He's, uh, oh, I have. I haven't had con any contact with him, and yeah, he's years. involved in a little project right now, or, or so, uh, which I won't tell about. But he's involved in a little project right now, so he's not really been online a whole lot. But uh, he kind of. He kind of chimed in on it a little bit too, and he, he didn't say nothing out of the way or anything. But uh, and it, all the uh, comments on the thread were pretty. Uh, there was all you know, it was all civilized. 
or I thought they were. And I don't and I don't want to bash the guy or run or try to run them down. That's not that's not my deal. I make films too, and most of my films are crap. But I know they're crap. But there's nothing in it that's fake. You Your know, films are I, not crap. <laughs> there's nothing that I've uh, you know I we didn't I would never put something like this out as being a real Bigfoot. I mean it's ridiculous to think that you know that you could pass the suit that been seen a million times off as real Bigfoot. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't have talked about that, but I well, no, but it's good to have it out there because it's going to be go, it's going to be around, and like I said, every, anybody who has knows anything about the subject knows that suit well, but yeah. some people that are coming in may not, so it's something that one, needed to be clear. One up. Google search would have uh, should have cleared yeah. that up, you know. I, I would be willing to bet that if you were to look up uh, Bigfoot suits or Bigfoot costumes. That it's would be the, the that would be one of the first three images that came up. But now, uh, my understanding, I'm going to give the film props, is that uh, everybody says the documentary is great up until that point, and that's right at the end. Uh, so I know there's a lot of people that's on my friends list that took part in this. People that are legitimate researchers and that that have had legitimate experiences. So it's worth watching for them and just realize that this last. That this this little last uh, thing at the end was it's like in the last ten minutes, from what I understand, uh, it was just something that should not have been included, or should have had a disclaimer, uh, or should have had a little more research done into the video footage. Uh, but you know, I, it's out there now, and uh, the bad part is it's going to overshadow the people who are in the first part of the film who are really telling legitimate stories, and that's kind of the bad part to me. And I hope they don't discourage the people from making more films, uh, the people who made the film. I, even though I've not watched it, I've heard really good things about it, except for that last 10-minute spot. And I hope it don't discourage them from making more films. But the bad thing is, the scumbags, and you know who I mean by the scumbags, are going to say that everybody that was involved with that film, everybody that's in that film, Mm -hmm. knowingly participated in a film that had a hoax in it. Therefore, mm -hmm. they're a hoaxer by association, and this right. is what the, the scumbags do, and they're probably they're going to ruin a pro probably uh, otherwise very good film. And but. see, that's the thing with people like Dr. Jeff Merrill. Uh, it's already a, uh, a risk for him to be in the Bigfoot field, given his profession and his education level. It's already a risk for him, so I, I can understand him having some concern for that and even voicing it and putting it out there because I know that he didn't know nothing about this. But uh, I don't know. I've made films and, and a lot of times you'll go interview different people and uh, the first person don't know the last person and they don't know where it's going to fit into the film. And that's what's happened here. So it's really, even though, I, like you say, it will be a reflection on everybody that had anything to do with it. It really shouldn't be because uh, the other interviewer, the interviewed people didn't have no idea what was going on. But you know, it's sad to see it happen in a way, and I feel sorry for the filmmakers, even though uh, they made a mistake, uh, then they made another mistake by defending it. That was that was the second thing. So don't, you know, just admit, hey, we flubbed it up, and we're not going to do that anymore. That would, that would have been the best thing to do, but sometimes people really don't want to be wrong, yeah. And they will fight tooth and nail that they're not wrong when clearly everybody be if, if they if they have if they're really personally invested in it, which being a filmmaker they would be. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just don't want to see it. But I mean, it's that's. Well, I don't. I don't, I don't like going after people like like that don't deserve it and stuff like that. Right. And yeah. it, it possibly could have been a mistake. Sure. And probably but, was a mistake, but the just thing say is, that. If, if you will admit your mistakes or your flaws, you take the power away from it. If you yeah, well, that's the thing. Mistakes, just just say it, and then there you go. You're you're good. Yeah, you. It's it's the easiest way to uh, stop the damage. Is just just admit, man, I messed up on that, and I'm sorry. I'm not. I'll, I'll be more careful going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been a better way to handle it. But everybody, you know, like you say, some people don't want to. They don't want to admit, hey, we messed up, but uh, I mess up a lot. My first uh, my first few films are terrible. There's a lot of misspellings and a lot of bad shots. But I had a $19 camera, so, you know. <laughs> so what can you expect? And uh, you, 
in in filmmaking you grow and you learn but i think uh i'm not for sure but i think these people did uh had some financial back into a kickstarter or something like that i don't know even uh uh seth breedlove had commented about it being so being embarrassing that that clip was included and i don't you know he's uh, uh, he's one of the uh uh, I guess in the biggest independent guys that I know and when he started he was about my level and but uh, man he just he caught fire and he's uh, he's making films and getting a lot of backing and a lot of cool merchandise and I've talked to him a few times seemed like a pretty nice guy and I also wish him success and it's uh, unusual for him to really comment on something like that but uh, it's kind of a hot topic so I guess I had to talk about it too but I'm a nobody <laughs> Okay, Leo. Uh, uh -huh. Hopefully, we've made a lot of people mad, and uh, <laughs> uh, but we've been honest, I guess. Well, ninety-nine percent of the time we behave ourselves, but uh, you know, you don't re you don't return bad for bad because nobody ever pulled any punches on us. So if we're allowed to have an opinion too, we're not purposely trashing people. We're no. allowed to have an opinion. No, I, uh, and, and and like I say, I'm not trashing those filmmakers. They just made a mistake, and, and then they wasn't on up to it, and that made it even more frustrating for me. Uh, but I would not want to dis, you know, encourage anyone not to watch the film. I'd refer you to go watch it because it's got a lot of my friends in it and people that I like and are respected people and that's had uh, real experiences. Uh, just that last 10 minutes, take it with a grain of salt, evidently. <laughs> Uh, so really, we got to all of our subjects, but uh, the patty, the patty thing. So we can carry it over maybe in our next show, whenever that might be. Uh, I'll, we can go ahead and inform people a little bit of what's what's coming up. Uh, we are still working on the uh, Mysteries Unlimited uh, magazine publication thing. Of course, work styled on that due to sickness and uh, health and just a busy life. Uh, so we're going to get we'll we'll be back going on that. Uh, we are working on uh, several film projects, which uh, I'm of course behind on that. I've got some interviews I should have already had scheduled, uh, but for several weeks I was really uh, really sick. I, I, I say sick, but I was really just tired. I felt so tired. I just all I could do to go. Uh, but we're going to continue to try to do our shows. But uh, along about the 19th of this month, I have some relatives coming in to stay for a few days. So there might be a chance we have to miss one or two shows toward the end of the month. Uh, but I've enjoyed doing the show uh, tonight. Uh, I've probably said more than uh, I probably should have. Uh, stuff that's out of character for me. Because I'm usually pretty reserved, and some people say that's a flaw, and that's okay. Uh, um, it's not a flaw, man. It's just who you are. Who you are doesn't necessarily mean it's a flaw. Well, that's what people say. I'm not controversial enough to be popular. No, I said that, and you took it the wrong way. <laughs> what you you're not you wasn't the first person that said that. I've had other people tell me that I'm too low key to be. Popular. And that's okay. I'm, uh, you know, I enjoy making films and I, I enjoy uh, publishing films for other people and books and, and whatnot. And and overall, I do enjoy the Bigfoot community. I just get frustrated with with the hoaxes that keep popping up over and over and over and over and over. If you're going to be a active participant in the Bigfoot community, take the time to uh, learn about some of these hoaxes. And that way you're not sharing bad information over and over and over again because people like me will have to go and try to correct it because we don't want new people coming in uh, believing bad information. Uh, so try if you are an uh, active participant in the Bigfoot community anywhere, try to uh, don't just share something and take it at face value. Try to research it a little bit and get to the make sure you're sharing good information, and that I think that would help. Always, always, always use your own eyes and your own brain first, and then Watch. dig in, then dig into into it, look into it a little bit, then make up your mind. Don't let somebody else make it up for you. Well, a good example is that uh, Bigfoot walking by the lake. Uh, it, it was, <laughs> it's it's made the rounds two or three different times, and it's uh, always 
you know, a uh, different location. And it's always somebody's friend or my buddy was at the lake and they was doing yeah. you know, it. And it's obvious a uh, hoax. I mean, uh, but, and stuff like that. And, that. and I'm sure it's about time for that to roll back around again. Well, the thing with that one is there's several that, that will make their rounds now and again. And they'll say, uh, it'll start in Michigan, then it'll go over to Colorado and, and yeah. stuff like that. But that one in particular has to be the, mo the most well-traveled <laughs> yeah. set of pictures I've ever seen. Get, get a kick out of that one now. It's got to the point where it's not frustrating, but it's funny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, the Bigfoot's in every lake in the world. <laughs> yeah, all at the same yeah. time. <laughs> but I guess, uh, see, we would... What day is the 19th on? Uh, that's on a Sunday. So our next show, No Bad Luck, would be on the 17th if nothing don't get in our way, uh, which who knows it could possibly happen. We're already a, a pastor of time, and that's okay. We've not been online in a while, and uh, we've had a lot of things to cover. And we've got a ton of things going on. We're both We're both finally both able to to get uh, trade our stories back and forth of being being out in the woods i'm finally able to go and i'm out there and i'm having a ball and uh, you're doing your usual thing like being out there all the time yeah I and, go run, a lot. and running yourself to the point where you were there for a little bit but uh, yeah i was pretty well my currently my wife is on a uh on a she's working a guy's vacation so she gets up at about 2.30 in the mornings. Uh, normally, uh, I wake up about that time uh, anyway, so, you know, when she's up. And I'll wobble around in the bed for 30, 40 minutes, and I usually get up around 3, at, and then I was working and going to bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night and getting up and doing it again. Uh, and I, I guess in some ways I'm kind of a workaholic. You uh, think? I enjoy, I enjoy Not you. work. <laughs> I enjoy work, so. Uh, but sometimes you got to take a break. Uh, I slept late the other day, and then in the morning, uh, I got to get up pretty early because of the, the heat and air guys, I'm finally replacing my unit. They're supposed to come and set me a new outside and inside unit. So hopefully, if they come and it's not raining, they can get that knocked out in three or four hours. And uh, I, I told my wife, I hated to spend the money because it's not very often in my life that I get to save a little bit of a nest egg. Uh, usually when I save a little bit of a nest egg, I mean, something's fixing to happen that I have to spend it all plus. Mm -hmm. So so uh, I saved a little mm -hmm. nest egg, and now I got to uh, crack my egg. <laughs> uh, but but 20, uh, the, the unit I got is 20 plus year old, so a new unit should be much more energy efficient. So hopefully I can save some money on the electricity bill. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You, you, it sucks to have to get break into that money and and spend it. In the long run, though, you know, twenty a twenty year newer unit, you, you'll be saving in the long run. But that still don't take away the pain from no. <laughs> seeing that much money go away. And believe no. me, buddy, I know what that's all about lately. That's yeah, crazy, man. Yeah, well, I know you. Do. Yeah, I know you do. Uh, wow. Well, so uh, we're going to plan on having a show on the seventeenth. No bad luck, correct? Yeah, absolutely. All right, then I guess all we can do is say goodbye. Say goodbye, Leo. Goodbye, Leo. <laughs> all and, right, you say bye, and you say bye to Tom for me. All right, bye, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Leo, man, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we'll get to do it again real soon. Oh, one thing, though, before we go, make sure to watch my crappy movie called Bigfoot Witness, the Jason Moore story. It's on Tubi TV. You can go watch it and leave all kinds of bad reviews if you want to. It's okay, watch my you. watch my crappy movie, he says. Right, man, yeah. you should have you should have been an advertiser. <laughs> and if, if that crappy movie's not good enough, go watch this crappy movie. It's and my crappy video is in that crappy movie. <laughs> yeah. So, Bigfoot: The Legend is real. It's on Tubi TV, and it'll cost you absolutely zero to watch it. So. <laughs> so I plug my two crappy, two of my crappy movies. Uh, if you really want to watch some real bad crap, go keep on going back to some of the older stuff. <laughs> but I have fun doing it, and nobody can stop me from having fun.
Well, there you go. That's the most important <laughs> part. And man, your your movies. Yes, you you had to start out at a certain point to learn, but you've learned a lot since you started. So, oh yeah, you're gonna and go back and, and yeah, you're gonna go back and criticize the the older stuff. But oh yeah, you don't well, make I, crappy still, movies. Still, my the one I was most happy with was the missing the Dennis Martin case. I, I know really, you really like, like that. Yeah. I'm really happy with how that one turned out for some reason. I don't know. I've watched it myself, even after I got it completed. I've watched it many times myself. Just, I don't know, there's something about the information in it that I like. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Well, there's, but, a, there's a lot, there's a lot more information than, uh, uh, trying to be nicey here. And than previous uh, iterations the, of it. Then, then the more, popular one from captain can you sign this for me yeah so, uh, yeah. Yeah. nobody's gonna know what that means but that's okay i do know. i know you do <laughs> <laughs> i do but uh yeah the story my story was on it was based actually off of the final submitted mm -hmm. documents of the, of the case so uh, i don't know i just, just kind of like it even though it's a short film but it's uh you know i got a lot of bad reviews on it but there's a reason for it Oh yeah, that was all. That, that was all set up because yeah, you yeah. dared touch the same subject as somebody else, and that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. But uh, I guess we'll call it a night, and uh, I'll go to bed. And my wife's got to get up here in a few hours, so I'll wake her up, and make her go to bed. And... <laughs> but uh, Leo, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I appreciate everybody that's watched the show and that will be watching the show on the replay later. Uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel if uh, if you've not already subscribed. Uh, and always check out our website. Uh, we try to be truthful in everything we do. We're not saying that we can be wrong. We can't misinterpret evidence, but we don't do it intentionally if we ever have. Uh, we try to be truthful and honest in everything that we do. And every walk, I try to do it in every walk of life and everything that I touch or have any dealings with. It's just type of dude I am. I've uh, always been kind of like that. Uh, but uh, appreciate everybody. I appreciate Leo and Rebecca helping us and all the people that watch. And uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, next Friday. No bad luck. Say goodbye, Leo. <laughs> <laughs>